So let me ask you this. You just went up one day, $167,000. Mm -hmm. How are you managing that this, this, this bag now? Because <laughs> you got $167,000. <laughs> Like some people would get analysis paralysis, like, oh, I got 160,000. Like, I don't want to, I don't, I don't even want to touch it yet. Some people, because they know that, now they're like, oh, I got to spend on this. I got to spend on that. I got to spend on. And now you just probably ran up 50 bands. It's just like, if that's you getting 167,000, how are you managing that new acquisition and divvying that up smartly or however your strategy would be? Yeah, great question. Great question. So um, I would say. What's going on, millionaires? It's your guy, Kai Speaks, back for another episode of the Million Dollar Mind Podcast. I'm here, rocked off with my co-host, Heavy House Jazz. How you feeling, Jazz? Feeling great. Feeling great. Blessed by the best, never stressed by the hey, best, she, like you would say. She beat me to it. She beat me to it. It's been a minute. I feel like I ain't seen you in a month of Sundays, Jazz. It's, it's, it's definitely been a minute. I appreciate you holding us down. Yeah. I had to get to You know, sometimes you got to focus. You got to focus, and then mm -hmm. you got to get back. But you got a great team, yeah. and I'm so grateful for you. I'm That's grateful it. for you. And uh, with that time off, I've, I've been doing some work, right? And I've been doing some research. And I've been looking because I'm trying to get a little bit a better hold of, like, the finances. Not just mm -hmm. my personal finances, but the business finances. Because that's what a lot of our listeners is telling us they want to get more acclimated with, familiar, familiar with. And um, according to recent reports, I'm going to read this stat. Because in 2003, the total U.S. credit card debt surpassed $1 trillion. Mm. That's crazy, right? Credit card debt alone. Not like personal loans or car. Yep. Like credit card debt credit alone card surpassed debt. Wow. $1 trillion with mm -hmm. nearly 80% of America's Americans having at least one credit card. Now, these, these numbers seem high and paint a different picture depending on what your relationship with money mm -hmm. and credit mm -hmm. is, right? Uh, for me, it might look different than for you, and for me, it might look different for Dre, right? Absolutely. And um, what I'm curious to know is, in that 80%, how many actually have like two, three, maybe even four credit cards? Because today, my guy, Dre Sean Austin, man, is in the room, and he's going to give us the, the, the credit card strategies on credit card stacking, how to leverage this for your business, take advantage of your personal credit, get a PG for the business credit, all this stuff, right? And a lot of this conversation... We haven't touched the surface. We had a lot of financial guys come on the show, but we a lot of this conversation that we have, and we haven't yeah. really scratched the surface on. So I'm really excited for this conversation, really excited for our guest today. Dre, tell our listeners a little bit about you and how you got to the place that you are now. Hey, yo, yeah. So uh, my name is Dre Sean Austin. Uh, everybody knows me as Dre Credit, though. Um, and how I got here today, well, man, it's, it's actually been a really interesting journey for me personally. Um, I had a lot of hardship throughout my life growing up. Um, I was constantly incarcerated as a child. Um, I did some time as a kid. I ended up, uh, once I turned 18 years old, um, I got the blessing of getting off of probation. So I decided to make a move out to Seattle um, just for a change. I obviously wasn't doing nothing good in California. Um, I just wanted a better life, just something different than I was doing now. Or back then, I mean, excuse me. Um, and so I moved to Seattle, man. Um, you know, tried to work a job here. Didn't work too good. Uh, fell back into bad habits. Um, ended up getting incarcerated again uh, as an adult back in 2018 um, for four and a half years. And that right there is what really mm. changed my life. Mm. Um, that Those four years right there. Uh, because I really just started tapping into myself. I started reading the right books. I started seeking out the right information, talking to the right people, and just educating myself in general and just becoming a better human being. Um, I, I'm, a big, I'm a big advocate of personal development, mm -hmm. right? Personal development is very, very important. Um, and so, you know, so I got out, um, was on work release. I was on an ankle monitor for a year. Um, I stacked up a bunch of money, saved a bunch of money. I ended up investing in a mentorship, um, a credit mentorship. Um, and my guy really took me over the top. Um, and I just really took it and ran with it. Um, I started out doing free credit repair for the people um, when I first started. And then um, after I got more experience, more confidence, I started getting deletions and things like that. I actually started charging people for it. Um, and then as well on the business funding side of it as well, uh, we also do help people get funding for their businesses. So that's really my main business. I can say is I help entrepreneurs get access to capital by leveraging their personal credit. Mm, okay, dope. Yeah. And we got a lot of entrepreneurs in the building, right? Yeah, a lot yeah. of entrepreneurs who are watching this every week. Um, and that's the name of the game too, because mm -hmm. we already know how tricky it is to start a business 
as a side hustle, right? Yes. Meaning you got this nine to five that you work in. You might have some kids you're taking care of, family mm-hmm. you're taking care of, yourself you got to take care of mm-hmm. on top of it all. And you're trying to run a business off of your personal funds. Mm-hmm. Like that is like a slow way to grow and scale your business. So being able to leverage your personal credit to get some business credit and to be able to use money for your business that was given to you for your business. Yes. I think that's a huge blessing to be able to put people in that position. Yeah. Uh, so like, let's start from sort of like the middle, right? Like, okay. cause you said earlier being incarcerated was like one of the best things to happen to you. And you know, for other people that might be the opposite, like that mm-hmm. might be the most, the worst. Cause it takes a lot at the same time. It does rob you of a lot of opportunities mm-hmm. too. If you're relying on those opportunities, like, to vote, get certain jobs, et cetera. Yep, absolutely. So explain how you think being incarcerated was the best thing for you um, right now. Uh, because that's that's where I really started developing uh, my mentality and my, my my belief on personal development being very important, um, you know, and, and just being more positive. And, you know, being, being able to take that time away for four and a half years, like there ain't nothing much to do in prison, to be honest with you, right? Mm. Like you can go to school, you can have a job or whatever, but like, to be honest, if you choose to not do anything with your time, nobody's going to care, right? So it's all about what you do with your time. That's going to determine the outcome of your situation, right? Like I didn't, I dropped out of high school at 16. I graduated, I, I graduated high school in prison. I went to college, right? I started going, um, I started pursuing my degree in philosophy um, and all, all this while I was incarcerated. Um, and like, yeah, so I would say just to be able to just have that time to be able to sit there and, and just learn about myself because out here in the real world, like everything is fast, mm-hmm. you know, constantly, like we got people have families, they got jobs, they got careers, they have everyday problems, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, everyday issues that we're dealing with. And like, so not a lot of people get the opportunity to actually develop as a person. Like how many times have we sat there on the outside and you been like, you be know what? Still. Right? That's all the only choice you had. Right? It's yeah. like we never actually sat down and and actually developed better as people, right? Like, you know, faced our problems, right? Like for me, you know, I'm very impatient still to this day. It's something that I work on every single day. But it's like I make a conscious decision to understand that and to, and to sit there and work because I know at the end of the day where I want to go, you know, I need to develop better habits, good disciplines, right? Because I'm trying to be, you know... Where I see myself, you know, in the next five to 10 years is being somebody very great. I want to be on stage. I want to be very influential. I want to touch millions of people across the world. And in order to do that, I need to lead by example. Mm. In order to lead by example, I need to develop the right disciplines. I need to have the right mentality. I need to have the right attitude, right, about about every situation about life, you know, because, you know, everything is about perception. Your perception is your reality in life. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, man. If you're talking like this after being incarcerated, I was I would agree with you, man. It's, and I don't know who you were before, but it sounds like the time you spent, like being locked up, you was well spent, was well spent right? Like, Absolutely. and you ain't like you said, you ain't had nothing else to do. Like, okay. it's like you 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 go to I, and I don't know what life is like, mm-hmm. but I'm pretty sure it's not as is not painted the same way that people think when they see the shows like Orange is the New Black or <laughs> Jailed and this reality yeah. TV shows and all that stuff like that, right? So, yeah, like. You said you graduated. You got your. You graduated high school at sixteen, but that was you were. Uh, you were dropped out. He dropped out. Oh, you dropped out he at dropped sixteen. Out, he finished, yep. high, he finished yep. high school in prison. In prison. He also in, wanted okay. to study philosophy in prison. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to. I was listening to you, and it's not every day that somebody can be in such a chaotic place, right, mentally, mm-hmm. and be still enough to actually develop that grit of that. Mm-hmm. I have to do something mm-hmm. different. And this is actually a time for me that I can do it. Some people, like you said, his perspective is everything. They're looking at what's been taken away from them. Mm-hmm. But you were looking at what was actually given to you, which was the gift of time to mm-hmm. actually develop yeah. this person that was out there with everything possible, mm-hmm. grasp, I mean, that you could grasp with a hand's reach. And you did nothing with it, but wind up in a place where you got to be still and get the best gift ever. Mm-hmm. So while you were in the middle... What came out of it? Bringing it back to you, Kai. Yeah, no, I mean, and I, and I want to know, like, what were you, like, if you were, you say you was in and out of prison when you were really young. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What were you doing, like, running the streets? Like, yep. what 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 landed you there the, the first time? Yeah, great question, bro. Um, so, yeah, uh, burglaries. Uh, we were we was breaking into houses and stuff. Uh, we were stealing out of stores. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I actually. Not having enough. Yeah, just not having yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah, um, sure. and, mm-hmm. and, you know, like, uh, you know, 
I have a pretty supportive family, but my thing was I'm, I was very, I, I had a very destructional personality as a, as a child. Mm. So like I had all the support in the world, but I, I, I didn't know, I just didn't want it. I wanted to, I wanted to be the cool guy. I wanted to, you, you know, wanted to do stuff I, your I seen, own. You wanted I, to yeah, make Yeah, I own. seen the dope boys selling dope. I seen uh, everybody ditching school. You know, they was selling dope. They was, you know, kissing on cute girls and doing this and doing that. And, and you know, I seen that. And and um, I think I just got influenced by that. And um, and that really caused friction within my household because uh, my mom, my mom was a, a runaway teen too. So she she left her house when she was 15 years old. She didn't come back until she was 28 years old when she had wow. me. So um, I think a lot of what I was going through, my mom seen me, my mom seen me fo- kind of following her footsteps in a sense uh, when I was younger. So she really tried to, lock me down like on some like you're not leaving the house stuff you're not going anywhere and that's probably why that's why that, moved. That, that made that made our that made our relationship so much worse because this is so cool i just couldn't i just really couldn't you know um it was just like friction i just felt like you know i was my own man i wanted to do i didn't want to mm-hmm. listen mm-hmm. um and you know i was very disrespectful um and and you know i'm i'm very blessed now today like me and my family we have a great relationship uh they're very excited for what i do um i got my mom her first credit card at 52 years old I love mm. it. and that just shows the education of, of just the older generation of how uneducated we are as a society on credit like my mom's like she's never had a credit card she's never had any credit like her credit's in the 700s now she got a couple credit cards mm. my dad's credit scores in the 700s my sister's credit scores in the 700s so like i've been really just yeah, putting all 700 my whole club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 700, 700 family. Family. <laughs> I love it. whole family in the 700 clubs yeah so all right so prior to you getting this education there, there was no conversations around like finance and stuff like that in the house. No, not at all. Not at all. Man, and that, I feel like that's the case for so many yes. of us yes, in our households. Yes. And so what was the conversation like when you introduced your mom to getting that first credit card? What was the hesitancies that she shared with you? Because I know, like my mom, I know like how she feels about credit cards. Mm-hmm. So I yep. can only imagine what similarities are there in that conversation. Absolutely, bro. Great question. Um, yeah, she was definitely like, you know, every they always said, you know, don't get into debt, right? Debt is bad. Don't get a credit card, right? That's what her parents told her, my grandparents, right? Um, and so, you know, there was some hesitancy, but I also, you know, I also was very informative. Like, you know, at the time uh, when I was visiting him, I was, you know, just telling him about my life, everything that I learned, my mentor, what he was teaching me, everything like that. So I think I gave them more confidence by mm-hmm. just just educating them on how credit works, right? Because there's two types of debt. There's good debt and there's bad debt, mm-hmm. right? Like not all debt is bad. It's about just how you use it. Obviously, right? Like if you just get a credit card, go buy a bunch of stuff, you know, that's not going to generate you any income, that would be considered bad debt. Mm -hmm. But, you know, to use a credit card to, let's say, buy a car that you could rent out, that's considered good debt because we're using it to create cash flow, Mm -hmm. right? So we can actually leverage, and that's where leveraging the debt comes in Mm -hmm. as well. What new ventures have you seen people actually, you know, take that that credit card liquidity and put their money into? What other vehicle have you seen them do other than that whole Toro play or... Something that actually could be sustainable with the least risk and it works right now. Yeah, great question. Um, yeah, so there's there's a few different things um, that I would recommend. Um, definitely, I mean, credit for sure. Um, I'm always going to recommend credit. It's very lucrative um, and you have a big impact on people. But I also would say, um, I would say YouTube automation. I just got into YouTube automation. Very low risk. Um, I'm not sure, but it's faceless YouTube channels. So, and uh, lo- YouTube's very, very lucrative. I'm, I'm just getting educated to YouTube recently. I just tapped in with uh, my guy, David Omari. I'm not sure if you guys yeah, know yeah, David yeah, Omari. Familiar with, I'm familiar with David. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I, I be- I, and once you said it, I'm like, he probably tapped in with David. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We've been, I've been tapping in with David. And, uh, but I would say, like, for low risk and, and high reward, definitely YouTube automation. Um, credit is good. And uh, I would say, though, like, besides that, I would say, like, for somebody who is just wanting to invest in something i would say invest in something that you actually care about i agree right like like don't just take my word for it like don't just say oh you know dre said credit is good so i'm gonna invest in it do something that you actually enjoy doing i I love credit yeah because if you don't love credit and it already confuses you one it's going to take you a whole lot longer to learn that skill and then two you're going to 
the time it takes you to t- learn that skill, by the time you learned it, you done fell off of it. Yeah. Exactly. Because that's happened to me like, yeah. for so many different that's things. That's yeah. always what I tell people <laughs> when they're diversifying their portfolio. Mm-hmm. I say, hey, make sure that you invest in things that you actually can enjoy yes. looking at the perspectives or looking at things because that's how essentially you're managing yes. your money and you understand, you believe, you either believe in it, right? Or you heard, or you like it. Yep. And, and if you don't make no money Like from I like it. it. Absolutely. That's what I'm saying. Like like you can years. like it and you're not going to make money yeah. from it. <laughs> so you have true. to believe in it and it has to be factual too. But you have to you have to essentially like find something that you're interested in. Yeah. Right? Something that interests you. Absolutely. So even if it's money, find something that's going to make yeah, the absolutely. money. Absolutely. That's yeah. factual. And, and, and what's interesting and to me needy. is the first thing he mentioned was credit. Mm-hmm. I know and, I heard and, that. And, and this guy's <laughs> in credit, right? And he said, he, uh, you like, you're pushing people to, to, invest in credit. to invest in credit businesses. Mm-hmm. And so that tells me, one, you're not worried about taking from your own pockets. And it just shows that this is an industry where the opportunities are abundant. Bro, it, not only that, but it's it's very important. Like, the impact, bro. Like, like, you don't even know how many clients, like, they just be, in, like, almost in tears, bro. They be like, my, my, I've never been in 700s, Dre. I've never done this. I have no idea. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. And, like, that is this worth is way it. more than the money, bro. Like, to sit there, like, to have people, to just have people praise you, bro. Like, like you know, I've never had that before. I've never had that that impact on people. So, like, that really resonates with me, bro. And that's really what makes me go and, and go that much further for people because the impact is so important because mm-hmm. it's like credit can change your life. Like being of service. You can yeah. it can change your whole entire life. And it and not only that, like, you know, whether you have good credit, it could change your life, or if you even just leveraging it, right? Because even if you don't want to leverage credit, let's just say, you know, just having good credit, you're getting good auto loan rates, you're, you know, you're getting you high limit credit. Purchase cards, rates. Home <laughs> purchase rates, everything is gonna be absolutely essential, right? And then on the leverage aspect, right? Like we can literally, like I say building credit is free, right? Because it's like this, right? So let's say that you get a credit card, $1,000 credit card. You put all your monthly expenses on that. You're going to spend it on your debit card anyway. Mm-hmm. So essentially, you're building credit for free. Now, where people where people mess up with that is because... Yeah, they always think they got some they, extra money. They always think they got the extra money. And so it's they the put all their them. bills on the credit card, <laughs> and then they're using their debit card so to still go out to, to create eat, a- still <laughs> do all system. this. Wow. And then next thing you know, that $1,000 credit card balance... They can only pay five hundred. Yep. And so now for the next month, you only got five hundred on your credit card, and then you probably spent two fifty. You, know you, th- <laughs> you need to make an app or a system where they put that actual money on there and it locks up, mm. and then it pays it yeah. automated. To yeah, that like extra it like that would be good. It locks. That'd be great because you work in credit anyway. Yeah. So get with an engineer and do it. I think it'd be great to couple with what you're doing because it. it, it, it Don't say it, too much. You gotta let him patent this first, Jeff. It's all right. <laughs> I get it. We won't put that part out. But I love building people, yeah, purpose, you know, and, and what they do and developing that. And when you think about it, like people really need that much control. Yes. Yes. Over their finances. I know because not, I'm like like my my parent was like your parent, not necessarily where they didn't have credit cards, but where they had a lot of credit cards. Okay. okay? And they understood a lot. And they need parameters. Mm-hmm. Like your mom was scared because she doesn't know, know the parameters yeah. too. So guess what? Put your little check over here. But guess what? We're having this credit card here. But now you're coupling it with my system that I'm selling, so that when you're tired of talking, that thing can still work for you. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. You want to buy your time. I'm big on buying time when I develop people, purpose, and portfolios. You want to build that. Absolutely. That'd be awesome. Time is essential. We know. We. I, yeah. I mean, even for me, like I, I just like I to take the thought. It. I like to take the, the the thought out of it too. Yeah. And that takes that helps and people you're take the saving thought out of it. these older people from credit card fraud, these people that don't give a damn. Like, I'm serious. Like, it's coupled with something that's honest and blah blah blah. I can go into a lot of different stuff with yeah. credit cards. And For sure. So, boom, let me ask you this. I want to know, I want to control it, and older people can't control it. I want to know, I want to know Dre's personal opinions and thoughts on the sentiments and the information that you know Dave Ramsey shares about debt. Right, like being that debt is bad, like don't go into debt, you know, mm-hmm. buy a house by, you know, paying off all your credit cards and then just saving monthly and stuff like that. Is now that you know what you know, is that actually sustainable? Are you familiar with Dave Rand? Dave yeah. Rand? Gotcha. Yeah. I figure you would. Yeah, yeah. Is that sustainable? Like, really, when it comes down to like where inflation is, 
nowadays where interest rates are nowadays and everything like that is something like that sustainable or is credit really like just a better way to go if you are smart about it um i definitely think i think credit is the the best way to go as long as you're smart about it like obviously what davis ramsey's saying is he's talking about people that don't have control right like if you don't have financial discipline or financial education right to be able to go out and get a hundred thousand dollars in credit it's probably not ideal for you mm. why because you're just not educated and you're probably gonna mess your report up right and you're gonna end up owing some money that's a good point but but on the flip side of that, though, I do disagree with David <coughs> Ramsey saying to not get into debt because debt is how debt is it, debt is money. Mm -hmm. Debt is how you generate money. Right. Like, you don't you know, and if you look at any rich millionaires, right, Robert Kiyosaki, Donald Trump, Warren Buffett, Jeff Bezos, bro, these guys are not using their own money. They're mm -hmm. using they're using debt. They're using mm -hmm. credit. Right. And so I think credit is essential as long, you know, to scale your business or to start a business. Right. Um, but. Yeah, on the on the flip side of that though, yeah, I do think Dave Ramsey. Um, as far as if you're not educated though, you definitely need to um, get the what does that say? Get the um, not be not not in debt. I yeah. should say right. But, <laughs> yeah. but no, and we had we had a guest not too long ago. So I think he was saying how Dunkin' Donuts even uh, last year leveraged something like two billion dollars in credit to to, exactly. to to be to where they are now, which is exactly. well over $2 billion. Mm -hmm. So it's like when you well, hear... I mean, everything is a debt. It's how you make money. It's how you it's make money. Real estate, you want to own a home, it's a debt. It's debt. When you call them, they're going to say, hey, and give you a disclaimer that this is a lien, right? Because it's a debt. It's mm -hmm. a debt. It's a debt, and it can essentially either make you money or not. Make, yeah. So I wanted to ask you, because the first thing he said, like you said, was to invest in credit. Like if he, he had credit, <laughs> he would invest in credit. Yep. What are ways that people can invest in credit? Invest in credit. Yeah, great question. Um, so are we talking about investing in credit so we they can have good credit? Or are we talking about investing in credit so they can make money? I want to know about your context in it because you were saying, hey. I think his context was like a credit repair business. Yes. Got that, it. That, that, so not, yeah, Got not it. like credit repair is good. Like credit repair business is great. Uh, but I would recommend if, you know, if you're not offering funding as a credit repair business, you're losing out on a lot of money. So essentially what happens is this, right? So it's like a funnel. Right. So this is how my system works. So let's say I have a client, they come for credit repair, right? Most of my clients, they, they want credit repair. They, they usually want to start businesses and things like that. Mm -hmm. So we get their credit fixed. Gotcha. So the avatar that's coming right. to you is like someone who is trying to start a business. That's, yeah. that's, that's the purpose why they want to get their credit. Yes. Yeah. Uh, mostly. Yes, yes. Yes. For the most part. Yes. I mean, I do have some consumers and stuff, but even then though, like you know, everybody sees my content on the internet. So if they hit me up, they're usually kind of interested in like they're trying to get to the funding. money. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you got to call them back. Yeah. So like, yeah, if you're not offering funding as a credit repair business, I feel like you're leaving a lot on the table. Um, and back what I was saying though, so the system, so they come in with the credit repair, my credit repair client, right? Let's say they give me, you know, five hundred dollars for credit repair, right? So we get the money on the on the front end like that. We repair the credit. Now they're ready for funding. We get them a hundred thousand. I get ten percent, right? So let's just say that's another ten thousand. So now we're at ten thousand five hundred from them, right? But now they're gonna have this money. So now we're gonna push them into the personal mentorship, right? The high ticket mentorship because a lot of people, you know, they may you know want to start a business, right? Or they may even already have a business, but they don't necessarily know how to market the business. And like marketing today is very important, especially with like social media. Like social media is an absolute gold mine. Like mm -hmm. if you're not marketing on social media and, and spreading your word on social media, you're missing out on millions of mm -hmm. dollars, literally millions of dollars. Especially if you're not doing that, like bro. one in particular threads right now. Is, yeah. Is jumping. Like, bro, it's crazy. <laughs> I'm going to talk about that thread. Yeah. It's crazy. This guy, I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> no, threads is jumping. I don't know if you're on threads though. I'm here, y'all. Y'all motivating jumping. me right now. Literally, I've been in a marketing meeting all morning with someone else and I'll be with you after that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, pushing me to it. Get to it. Yeah, it's marketing. It's very, it's very, it's, it's absolutely essential. Um, and so, yeah, so it's like a system because it's like, you know, you get the money on the front end and then you get them funded and then they always go to the high ticket mentorship because you already develop you know? that relationship with them, bro. They're not going anywhere else ever. Mm. They're always going to stick with you. So like if they have anything, their business, anything like that, they're always going to invest in you simply because you took care of them, you got them funded and now you're, you're going to teach them how to actually make more money. So essentially like that, that's how I see it, bro. Like every, almost all of my clients have either got funded from me or upgraded into my high ticket mentorship after credit repair. Mm. Where do they need to be credit wise and like profile wise for you to successfully fund them? Yeah. Yeah. Great question. Especially if we're looking at the six figures. Yeah. Yeah. Great question, bro. Um, so a lot of people think it's about the credit score, 
the credit score is irrelevant. It's about the credit report, right? And what I mean by that is the credit report makes up the credit score, right? So you can have one credit card that you've had for a year and you're going to have a, a high 700s credit mm -hmm. score, bro. But that's not going to get you $100,000 from the bank. Mm -hmm. Not even close, right? right? So you have to have, it's all about the report and that report has to have certain data points. So my data points for me and the, what my team follows is we want to have at least 10 primary accounts. Primary accounts are anything in your name. It could be a credit card. It could be a line of credit. It could be a personal loan. It could be an auto loan. It could be a student loan. It could be a mortgage. It could be a credit builder account. If it's in your name, it's considered a primary account. You're going to want at least 10 of those, right? The next thing you're going to want is your utilization at least 10% or less, right? Uh, preferably, you know, on the report is best, but I would recommend across every credit card, right? Because here's the thing. If you have a 10000 like if you have $100,000 in credit, right? And you have a $10,000 credit card maxed out, right? And you have $90,000 available, your overall utilization is still 10%. But you are still going to probably get denied simply because the utilization on that card is completely out of whack. So my recommendation is to have 10% or less utilization across every single card on the report, right? For best results, the closer to zero, the better. The next thing that I would recommend is you want um, an average age of at least four years, right? So how how they determine that is they take your oldest credit card and they take all your newest credit cards and they average it out right and that that's going to give you your average age so you're going to want at least four years of that simply because it shows that you've been managing debt for some time right and uh, for everybody who's watching if they don't know how to add age to your report um, it's very simple you could just add an authorized user which is basically just piggybacking off of somebody else's report so let's say that you add a 20 a 20 year old credit card to your report, right? Um, you're gonna adopt all that 20 year history as well as that credit limit. But what's really gonna matter is the history because it's gonna add to your age. <coughs> mm -hmm. um, and then I would say the next data point, I would say at least one credit card with a $5,000 limit, preferably though 10 or above is when we're gonna get the best results. But $5,000, can, we can still get it done. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the last thing I would say is three inquiries or less within each uh, consumer reporting agency and uh, zero within the last six months. So a big denial that I've been seeing lately is too many new recent accounts. So the banks don't like to see that you have been applying for credit before simply because it makes you look thirsty. The banks don't want to lend to people who want credit or they don't want to lend to people who need credit. They want to lend to people who want it because if you need it, you're probably not going to be very educated about it, right? Because you need it. So, you know, um, but yeah, so yeah, that would be my data points. I would say. So, all right. Yep. So boom, if I have, um, it won the, 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 the six figure funding, right? Mm -hmm. Is this in the, the the form form of a line of credit or is it like a loan yeah yeah great question great question um so usually a lot of the times what we like to do is i work with a lot of of you know new entrepreneurs so what i what i what i specifically like to preach is that we can get you funded on a brand new llc with no business revenue coming in so to your question so like for lines of credit and loans and stuff you usually have to have an llc that's at least two years or older mm -hmm. Um, so what we really target now, if you don't meet that data point, then it would be business credit cards at 0% interest simply because okay. we can leverage those. Yeah. And I, I think those are mm -hmm. better too, for someone's just starting out too, because I don't know if it's the same for a line of credit, but I know for sure with the loans, the, 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 the timeline starts right there. Once you get funded yep. the next month, you got to make yep. a payment on that, on that loan. Yep. Right, where as opposed to when you say these zero percent interest credit cards, mm -hmm. you get funded, you either use all the funds or you don't, but yep. you don't have to make a payment for at least twelve days, like six, twelve, or eighteen months. Yep, yep. So I think that's better because then it gives the entrepreneur, especially if you have a plan, yep. six, twelve, or eighteen months to run the play, well, get funded, get some cash flow, and stuff like that. Well, business line of credit is the same; it's only going to charge you on what you use. Yep, Ex Very that's, true. that's why. I, that's why I was just like a with. credit card. Yeah, right. So the loans is really like the last, the last. Well, what? Wait, okay. Because because they charge you right away. So if you let's say if you you don't you don't even give yourself enough time to yeah. get no cash flow from the money that you use or haven't used, then you just eating that. You just you just paying into the, mm -hmm. the, the payments. You know, you just making payments right away. I got a question for you, Drake, because mm -hmm. um, I've been like playing around with this theory, and I want to hear from an yeah. expert yeah. on what they think about it. 
So let's say you got somebody who is trying to make themselves attractive for those, you know, those business credit cards. Yeah. Right? They established the LLC. Mm-hmm. Let's say they got fair credit. Okay. Um, is it possible for them to line themselves up? They establish their LLC. They get like a business line of credit. Mm-hmm. Let's say they get approved mm-hmm. and they get approved for, for let's say 50,000 mm-hmm. and they use it. And I don't know if you could do this. You let me know if I'm right or wrong in this theory. They use it to pay off their personal debt. So oh, whatever yeah. their cr- personal credit cards off, whether it's a, a cash advance or whatever, mm-hmm. then that increases their credit their their credit score even more. So yeah. then now they can go run another play to get a credit card or two, maybe one yeah. to pay down that line of credit that they paid, and then the other one for for business expenses. Yep. What do you think about that play as far as strategy wise? Yeah, that that's that's a great play. Uh, simply because you know if you have that high utilization say on that personal side that's going to lock you out of any funding Mm. right so um i would always recommend yeah if you can bust that play to where you can move your personal debt to your business right so let's say the business line of credit they got ten thousand dollars in debt they move it to the business line of credit right their score jumps up so what you can do now is so instead of let's say having to pay interest on that ten thousand dollars um that you used up from that line of credit so now that your report is in order, what you could do is you can go apply for a business credit card with 0% interest and then transfer the balance. Mm. So therefore, that, that way you're not actually paying any interest mm-hmm. on the actual, um, on, on your uh, business, you know? Yeah. Um, because I mean, I'm a big fan of paying no interest. I mean, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, was going to ask you that like, too. I'm a big fan of paying no interest, bro. Like, because it, it only makes sense. So right? the interest rates for you don't matter because no. you ain't trying to pay no nope. interest regardless. And, nope. And then, and then what I do, what I do too is so like, let's say that, let's say that, uh, um, one of my welcome offers on one of my 0% interest cards is is going to be over in a month. What am I going to do? I'm going to go apply for a new business credit card and transfer that balance. So I repeat that. So let's say that, you know, it's it's coming up on a month and I still got $20,000 I owe on that credit card, but it's about to start accumulating interest. Mm. I go apply for another credit card, transfer that balance. That way I'm, I'm constantly never paying any interest on my money. Mm. And, and essentially the more you can, the more credit cards you can have, the better because then you still have you have like two or three credit cards that you're doing rotating that debt, and you got like another two over here that you can use for business expenses exactly. and, yep. and and you know leveraging that debt to yep. accumulate you know cash flow and stuff. Absolutely, like that. absolutely. No, that's that's very smart. Yeah. So, um, I'm assuming is that which because we talked about credit card stacking is that what credit card stacking is or is that a whole nother play? <laughs> yeah, great question, bro. So no, credit card stacking is when you strategically apply for banks based on which bureaus they pull mm-hmm. from. Right. So let me give you an example. So let's say that we have Chase. Right. They pull from Experian. So we're going to go to Chase. We're going to get twenty five thousand from them. Yeah. Right. Next, we're going to go to Key Bank. They pull Equifax. We're going to get another twenty five from them. Right. And then we're going to go, let's say, to Navy Federal. Right. They're going to pull TransUnion. We're going to go get another twenty five. The reason why you want to strategically stack it like that is that way you know, we can maximize the amount of funding we're able to get. Because if we start filling up one bureau with too many inquiries, we're going to get denied instantly. Mm. Right. And so think about this. So like, imagine if we can get three cards on Experian, three on TransUnion and three on Equifax, that's nine business credit cards, Mm. nine business credit cards, right. And only three or only three inquiries within each of the bureaus. And another tip for uh, the audience watching is for business credit cards, you can remove the inquiries because they are not attached to open personal credit card accounts, right? So they don't report to the personal credit. So the reason why you wouldn't want to remove, let's say, an inquiry on a personal credit card is because you run the <coughs> risk of it getting shut down. The right? card. The card, right? Because uh, so if you remove the inquiry, they, it runs the risk of it getting shut down. As opposed to the business credit card, I never card. knew that. So yep. if you got a, if you have an active credit card, mm-hmm. and it's it, it, even if the if you had this credit card for three years, mm-hmm. and you want to get that inquiry removed, it can close your. They can potentially close your credit card down. Yeah, yeah, possibly. Damn. Yeah, because basically, so what what they're what they're referring to, right? So if you get an inquiry removed, you're basically saying that you didn't apply for that credit card. So essentially, essentially what you're saying is that it's fraudulent, right? Mm-hmm. You're like, hey, this this inquiry is a fraudulent inquiry. I never initiated any credit, right? So that's essentially what you're saying. And so when they see that, that's why they would possibly shut it down because they can think that it was a fraud. Somebody opened it fraudulently in your name mm. so they can shut the card down. As opposed to, but on the business though, since they don't report to the personal 
we can always remove the inquiries. And that that's why I always recommend um, not to stack too crazy on the personal because inquiries stay on your report for 25 months, mm -hmm. right? So let's say you just bust a super play on the personal side and run up nine inquiries, right? Three in each bureau, right? It's like now you're going to be, you know, that's going to take away from you being able to get business funding, right? Because the, the less inquiries we have, the more funding we can get because, you know, we have more options open to us. Mm. Um, so the inquiry, keeping the inquiries low is very, very important. Because inquiries pretty much, like you said, looks thirsty. Yeah, it, exactly, right? Whether and, you got approved or denied. Yep, that's, yep. It, it, that, yep mm -hmm. that, that's how the banks know if you're actually applying for credit, mm. right? Because they pull your report and they see that recent inquiry. Which is why you want to, that's why you want to strategically apply based on which bureau they pull from, right? That way, that way, you know, if we go to Chase and then KeyBank, KeyBank doesn't know mm. we just got the bag from Chase. So an inquiry don't matter if it was approved or declined. It's just the fact that it's an inquiry. An inquiry. Because, wow. Because it just shows that you sh you're still looking for credit. Yeah, yeah. So what, what an inquiry actually is, is it shows that a creditor pulled your report. So the difference between, a, so you have hard inquiries and soft inquiries. So hard inquiries is when they actually pulled your report. They actually pulled it and they got a copy of it for themselves, mm. right? A soft inquiry is only when they look at your report. Mm. Right? I mean, they only it's still a pool though, right? It'll still right. show up. And yeah, so, uh, so a soft pool will show up. Yeah, gotcha. it'll so still show why, up. So that's why, because I used to sell um, telecom, like, so, okay. and, and we used to always talk about, oh, this is just a soft pool, right? Mm -hmm. And so I forget who said it, but it was like, man, stop saying that BS. There's no such thing as a soft pool. But I get what he was saying. He wasn't saying it's not literally a set. It's the fact that it's still going to pull up on a credit report. Yeah, it, it just doesn't it just doesn't uh, mess your score up. And, and the creditors don't hold that against you. So, like, you oh, know. Oh, they don't? No. So, like, let's say that you did a soft inquiry, yeah. right? Um, you know, pre-approval or something. It's just a soft inquiry. So, you know, when you go apply at another bank and they, you know, they're not going to look at that soft inquiry because they don't care. Not like a hard inquiry, a hard inquiry, because a hard inquiry is usually an application for credit. Mm -hmm. uh, That's gotcha. what that consists because of. Because an underwriter needs that yes, report. Yes, you need to get like a that. copy of it. So okay. in a hard inquiry, you know, they, they, they match that with Makes you sense. actually awesome. applying. Yeah. yeah. Real estate private lenders, they do soft pools. Yep. Okay. Soft pools. Yeah. You're not applying for credit, let alone the asset is what. Mm -hmm. well, so I credit like card stacking is so credit card stacking is just be strategically making sure that you're applying at banks to make sure you're not putting credit cards on one uh, credit reporting agency. Yes. Okay. Got yes. You. Yes. So you so we can be able to maximize the amount of business credit cards we're able to get, right? Because let's say that you know you got somebody who wants three hundred k, right? Like you know that's a pretty that's a pretty good number in credit, and mm -hmm. so in order to be able to get that as fast as possible, we're going to need to be very strategic. Mm. So another thing um, for the audience too that I like to give out is uh, what you can do is, uh, so how you run up on multiple, right? So let's say that we want to get uh, three business credit cards from Experian only, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to pull up, you're going to pull up three tabs on a computer, right? So let's say you pull up Chase, Amex, and Navy Federal, right? All three tabs. So you're going to, you're going to, you're going to apply, you're going to, uh, um, Fill out all the applications, 99%, and you're going to click submit on all three applications at the same time. The reason being is that way the other banks don't know that you're applying at the other banks. So let's say that you apply for Chase, boom, hard inquiry, Amex. Amex is going to see that Chase pulled your report five minutes ago, right? But if we submit the applications at the same time, Amex doesn't know that Chase is pulling it. You see what I mean? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so I'm going to show you your girl's computer and your computer, and yep. you can have two, and yep. he got two. So oh, no, 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 I got double screens. Yep. And I got, you know, so he said multiple tabs. So. Yep. Oh, yeah, or double screens. Yeah, whatever you got. But yeah, essentially, yep, that's how you would do it. So, like, um, yeah, the most we got at one time is 12. Um, so, how we did that, yep. So, in I would, one day, 12 yep, credit cards. Yeah, 12 credit cards in one day, yep. <laughs> Uh, 12 business credit cards. Yep. And so, I yep. Like that. Now, I'm sure you had that. to be, you had to have, you I'm had to have, I can't wait nice, till you show me that. You had to have nasty uh, credit score for that, though. Like sevens, 750. What you, what you, what you got to look like to have 12 credit cards in one uh, day? Yeah. Well, great question. So, I wonder um, how you did I, I wish you could give us like a visual. Like, I wish you could have a laptop how many right now. You had you out? Did you have your brother? Yeah. I had, no, I had, because I've been there. I had two. Yeah. Yeah. I had two, I had two computers. So, I pulled up two tabs on one computer. And I had somebody with me. They pulled up other two tabs. I filled out all the information for the client. They clicked submit on the on the one computer. I clicked submit on the other computer. And so, I mean, you can apply for however many credit cards you want, right? So it 
it's one thing to apply for 12 and then get approved for 12. So, like, you can apply for however many credit cards you want. Um, But so, but to get approved for credit cards, bro, uh, 12 business credit cards, I would say the data points that I said earlier, as long as you have those 10 accounts, you know, that um, low utilization, average age of four years, low inquiries, no new accounts in six months, like, you are going to be set up for success. Like, you're not going to get denied. Wow. Oh, say, so you you got approved for 12 credit cards in one day. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. Not just applied. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Approved. Yeah, wow. approved. What, what was the I mean, what was the total, I mean, total, total funded net? for, yeah, total yeah. funded for that? Great question. Great question. So it was like 167,000. Okay. Yeah. That's so you up for 150. About, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. a little bit, a little bit more than 10, 10, 10 bands per per. Yeah, card. yeah. It, it was a difference. You know, some were six, some were nine, some were seventeen, some were twenty three. Right. So it really just depends on on the bank itself because banks have different data points, bro. Like, so the data points that I gave you is is pretty universal, like as far as getting approved. But different banks like um, have different type of things that they trip on. So one bank may be very inquiry sensitive, so mm-hmm. they don't like any new accounts. Right. Another bank uh, and, you know, another bank may not be so inquiry sensitive. They might not care so much. So it really just depends on on each different bank. And then sometimes they're like, hey, give me some money and I'll give you more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it, it really <laughs> just depends. Um, yeah. All right. So so let me ask you this. You just went up one day. One hundred and sixty seven thousand mm-hmm. dollars. How are you managing that? This, this, this bag now, because <laughs> you got one hundred and sixty seven thousand dollars. <laughs> Like some people would get analysis paralysis, like, oh, I got 160,000. Like, I don't want to, I don't, I don't even want to touch it yet until yeah. I know exactly what to do with it. But then the clock is also ticking for yeah. that 0% interest. So some people, because they know that, now they're like, oh, I got to spend it on this. I got to spend it on that. I got to spend it on. And now you just probably ran up 50 bands. It's like, <laughs> so how are you, if you, if that's you getting 167,000, mm-hmm. how are you managing that new acquisition? and divvying that up smartly or however your strategy will be? Yeah, great question, great question. So um, I would say check the numbers. Um, you know, really just figure out what what you need in your business to scale your business. Um, so that's what I did, right? So like I put some money in marketing, I invested in in other pieces of information, right? Um, you know, I have my, my company now, but like I say, I invested in YouTube automation. Um, I just started a few Instagram theme pages as well. Um, so we have different things that we're actually going in. So I would just say, yeah, to to be smart about it, I would say really just um, audit your business and see where you can make the most of it, right? Because just because you have like one hundred sixty seven thousand doesn't necessarily mean that you need to use it all, right? Especially right. if you like, if you don't need it all, you don't need it all, right? Like for me, I was just like, especially if you're trying to rotate, if you're trying, you want to leave some extra. So yeah, you yeah, like you be smart, right? Like just because you got a hundred grand doesn't mean you need to spend it. Like be smart, right? Like I had a hundred, I got, I got one hundred sixty seven thousand, but I didn't spend one hundred sixty seven thousand though, right? Mm. I probably only spent maybe like. 70s in the 70s thousands right mm-hmm. so so like oh, excuse me um maybe like almost half right a, l- a little bit under half so i didn't even use it all myself um and that's simply because like you know uh, i'm very smart with my with, with my money and my finances uh because i don't like to be in debt and um i don't like I'm, I'm real careful on my investments as well because i try to steer away from making any bad investments even though like you know, bad investments just happen. I mean, investing, you know, it's just a, it's just a risk, right? A Sometimes risk. you just risk, you just get a bad investment. That's totally fine. But for me, I try to, I try to really think about it and how it's going to benefit me and um, be in the future. So like, I'm big on like online money. I'm a big, because I like to travel. I can tell you do you troll YouTube. Yeah. yeah. So like, yeah. I'm, I'm like, com- I'm like completely it. like, I'm, I'm a big traveler. Like I want to travel the world and I also want to be able to make money anywhere from the world. So like, I'm specifically just online based business. Everything that I do is online based. Um, so, yeah. do you think that um, I remember us touching on like, hey, that person that has done what you do, mm-hmm. right? Do you think that you'll ever kind of grow to help that person that went into business? But like, life happens. Like we were just talking about, like that happened to me a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, and just getting them back on track to like so business can truly run. Right, because like every real business? business person that does well in business loses it all. Losing okay? it all. Okay, oh, and then yeah. they have to come back. Yep. So how can you tap into more of those guys, or do you even have the desire to help people that have took your advice and then, like I said, life happens and they want to come back to you? Oh, yeah, great question. Yeah, I'm definitely, yeah, I'm open to helping everybody out. Yeah, um, yeah if I can help <clears throat> you, um, I, I definitely will. Um, as far as like, you know, making a bad investment and let's say, you know, or things went sideways in your business. Um, yeah, I mean, I would I would definitely say bounce back. I wouldn't let it discourage anybody uh, because, you know, 
that's that's just entrepreneurship. Things are gonna happen. Uh, things never go as planned, right? Murphy's law, right? Mm. Whatever can go wrong will go wrong, yeah. and that's just life, right? Um, and I think in those moments is the big determiner of what type of individual you are, because the average person, like like you know, let's say that you know you made a hundred thousand dollar investment and completely lost it all. Now you owe you owe on on, on a bunch of credit mm. cards a hundred thousand dollars and you you have no business That's tough. and you're making no money whatsoever. Yeah, you literally you know you might the, not be a good business. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, but no, in those hard times though, is you know ninety nine percent of people are gonna just walk away, right? They're not gonna try to open up another business. They're not gonna try to do anything. Why? Because the you know they they failed the first time. Um, and I think you know. The people that will continue to do that, though, will continue to grind and understand that this is just part of the process. Mm -hmm. Those are the people that is really going to make it. Um, that says yeah. something about you, you yeah. know. A lot of times, is tough we, though. Say it again. I said a hundred thousand. Hundred thousand is, is tough. No, yeah. to me, I don't. Yeah, but when you do business, <laughs> that's you. She spent a yeah. hundred thousand a lot of times. Yeah. Um, if you're really doing real business, my thing for me is is that you sit there and you see a lot of credit guys. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we want to help you and you don't have any problems or you have these basic things that we can fix. Yeah. But to hear you say, I want you to come back. Yeah. Right. And it, and it says something about your story, yeah. your journey, where like, I'm incarcerated, I had to come back, go yeah. back, yeah. And, back <laughs> and build myself as yeah. a new man. A new man. And how I see myself Absolutely. and where I'm going. And I think that's the biggest part of business is when you literally fail. Oh, you know, and absolutely. you have to get up off of your absolutely. shame and off, off of that, yes. that floor and yes. say, I have to help myself. But then where do I go? Who's going to take me when they see that the, the, the task is pretty difficult? Yep. And so to shine out like that, that you'll actually take, you know, that entrepreneur on that went through some difficult times. And yeah. we can get them back. Yeah, into absolutely. Credit and, absolutely. And doing business. Yeah. And we, scaling again. We have to. Yeah. yeah, we have to. I mean, we have to help each other out, Um, you know. I'm, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a gatekeeper. I'm, I give, yeah. I give, I give a lot of my information away yeah. for free. Almost everything you can get online for me for free. Like you check and just out. setting yourself aside. You know how people go like, oh, they're difficult. Like, oh, I don't want to do it for this fifteen hundred or this five thousand. It's gonna be a lot of work. Or, but that's passion. That's yeah, integrity. yeah. And it, and it's you know, for people that don't want to put in the work for let's say five thousand or whatever, it's like, so what's the alternative? <laughs> right. Like, for, for like five thousand so, is right, still you could still do right, a lot. With, right. So like. Like for mentorships, right? Like I'm a big advocate of mentorships, bro. I'm a fast tracker. Like I'll pay somebody ten bands, twenty bands, thirty bands, it to to make to make money now, right? Like I want to make money, you know, in the next. If I start something, I want to be making money within the, the first ninety days. Like, right? I don't want to go through the hardship, the trial and error. I just want somebody to give me the blueprint. Um, but so for a lot of people though, they don't like, you know, they see a number, right? So let's say, you know, they throw a number, ten thousand dollar. Um, mentorship, right? A lot of people will be discouraged by that because of the fact that the number's high. But it's like, well, what's the alternative? You know, um, you know, you're just gonna you're just gonna work your whole life, right? That that that's fine too if that's what you want to do. Or inflex at twenty five right? percent higher. <laughs> right or now. or it's like or it's like you're gonna consistently make you're gonna consistently go through trial and error. It's gonna take you so much longer to let's say make $20,000 a month in your business if mm -hmm. without a mentor. Like I couldn't imagine, I I don't even know where I'd be at if I didn't have a mentor in credit. I probably wouldn't even, I, yeah, I don't even know where I'd be. Like how I would have educated myself or, or anything like that if I actually didn't have a mentor. Um, I definitely wouldn't be where I'm at now sitting here with you guys you know, telling my story Thank and, and touching that. lives. Yeah. Shout out um, to everyone. Yeah. You need a, you need a mentor. You, <laughs> you need a mentor. You need, the, you need the right mentor most, most importantly too. Yeah. And so when it comes to like for you and mm -hmm. and I, I mentioned we've had a, a a lot of different guys in the credit repair space, mm -hmm. um, in finance space, you know, come on the show, and I'm sure that there are a lot of out there on even social media. Oh yeah. What what um what are some things that people should look for when they're choosing the right person that they want to work with? Like you That's can obviously talk question, about like guy. what 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 sets you apart from all the other guys. But, you know, if, if it's not you, then what should somebody look for? Like, oh, I want to work with Dre or I want to work with this person or that person. Because at some point, if we're all on social media, that's 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 the place where we can get analysis paralysis. Because <sighs> if, 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 if you put in the right hashtag, you're going to see seven, so, eight, nine, 20, 11 guys. And it's like, I always had this feeling like I'm just a real like person. Like yeah. I always talk from a real patron's perspective. Like, I don't want to give you my information. 
Yeah. Like, even though my, my credit is effed, like, what are you going to do with it? Yeah. Like, yeah, in yeah, a right. sense, right? Because you're smarter than me. You get scared a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, like, he, I like that question, Kai. What do we look for yeah, to what are say we you for? are the guy I want to patronize? Yeah, great question. Great question. So um, I would say just somebody that you connect with. I could say from from my past experiences and what people have told me in the past why they really like me is because they say that my, well, for one, they say that my content is different. They say that a lot of people post the same type of content. They say Mm -hmm. that I'm consistently coming up with new content. And they said that um, when they talk to me that they genuinely feel like I care. Um, And I think and I think that's what you need to look for. You know, if you're looking to work with somebody to get your credit repaired or anything like that, you need to be able to see if that person is actually genuine, genuinely interested in you, bro. Because, you know, to be honest, a lot of the time, especially in the credit repair um, industry, there's a lot of shady stuff that goes on. There's a lot of people, you know, that um, that do a lot of shady stuff, man. And, um, you know, there's obviously laws that prevent credit repair organizations from doing that. Right. It's called the Credit Repair Organization Act. Right, which is legally like, you know, you're not actually really supposed to charge people for credit repair up front um, and you can't guarantee any results. Right. Mm. Um, Which is why I'm a big advocate. Um, You know, I used to post a lot of my client results um, and things like that because it's social proof. And I still do like in my webinars and things like that. But uh, I don't boast it too much on social media because I don't want to give people the uh, misleading idea. Right. Because I cannot sit here and say like, yeah, I clean credit and I get stuff off. Right. But, you know, showing this person's results has nothing to do with this person over here because it's different. And, you know, like I say, like you can get sued for that, bro. Mm. Like, you know, like if you if you started guaranteeing results to people and misleading them, you you can get sued for that. So I would say uh, definitely just work with somebody who's actually educated, knows the law. Um, A lot of people that do credit repair, too, uh, depending on what state, have to be licensed and bonded in that state as well. Mm. Um, So that's another thing to look for. Um, but besides that, yeah, I just say somebody. How do you find that? What uh, license and bonding? Mm-hmm. Um, I would say, yeah, you can look at you can look it up through your Secretary of State website. So you should be able to look up their LLC, and you should be able to see the licenses that they do have. And if they're a credit repair organization, they should be licensed and bonded in that That's state. Mm. That was mm. great information. That yeah. was one of the first times I heard that. Yeah, so yeah. that was good. Um, I want to switch gears a little bit. Because now we're starting to see the trend of a lot of these buy now, pay later services. <laughs> yeah. It's trending like everybody, yep. oh, just just get it on the affirm. Get it yep. on the after pay. Yeah. Right? You know, yep. that's like the biggest <laughs> that's thing. That's remind me of old school. Like, well, I cannot go back there. Yeah. Okay. So like what 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 are you what are you, what are your thoughts on like the buy now, pay later services? Uh, and and I, I wanna because I know for for one it's bad. Like if most people using it to buy shoes and stuff like that. Yeah. So, but if because like, they do now have it, especially if you're a coach and you have like like a Stripe account, you can offer afterpay mm-hmm. for your coaching uh-huh. services. So let's say, for example, we're getting a mentor mm-hmm. using the the buy now pay later service. Is that is is that the same, better, or worse than just waiting until you can get a credit card and just using the credit card for it? Because like, what if you don't finish the program? Yeah, My great, debt to yeah. you. Yeah, yep. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, great question. Now, yeah. Putting that, I'm putting it on your credit. Yep, yep. I'm the credit guy. Putting it on your credit. <laughs> yeah. And you tried to learn how to fix your credit. Yeah. You know, um, you know, I can't really say whether it's better or worse. I would say, you know, it's up to the individual. It really depends on how how serious they are, right? Because if you're real serious about success, you're not gonna wait. I mean, I'm, all they're doing is raising yeah. that damn 2003 consumer debt. <laughs> yeah, from I, a trillion to two trillion. Yeah, cause I'm about to say, cause with with that, it's like that's like a loan. It's more so like yeah, that five thousand. The one they're gonna most likely hit you with either payments is like four payments, eight payments, yeah, like yep. right. So For it's sure. like five thousand divided by and four. four yeah, that's like eight thirty three. That's rent. Like eight hundred. That is rent. Yeah. You paying? You paying two rents? Now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, like so, that's for me is like when when I think is a little tricky for all that. You might yeah. just kind of like yeah, get it on the credit card with zero percent interest, pay it all, and then mm-hmm. you're gonna be looking at what monthly payments are like three forty, four hundred, maybe yeah. like something like that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well. Yeah. In that case, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, for definitely that was people. Good. That was. That was great. Yeah, no, that aspect the after pay and like how you can actually like come around. And that yeah, pay. no, that makes what a lot of sense credit? though. I mean, you gotta have if if you got to prove for the after pay, you got I don't something. Know. I don't use it, after it, pay. Right, so yeah, I don't <laughs> one, right. One thing I one thing I will say from from because I've sold a lot of like I've I'm, I do high ticket sales sometimes, right? So I've sold a lot of programs and like we'll start using that. 
And the difference, I think, with Afterpay and like the the Klarna and the mm-hmm. Learn and all them yep. is they are it's like layaway. It or, is. Or, or, yeah. So so it's I think it's built more so for consumers. It is. So their 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 um requirements or mm-hmm. uh uh Specs that be looking mm-hmm. at is a yep. lot less. The yep. data point. Like you can have a, a lower credit score to get a uh, now probably not for no ten thousand, right? Right for not for no five thousand. But for the Jordans, it makes sense on why they would probably get yeah. a, a, approved yep. for you know a little three hundred dollars, yeah, three hundred dollar affirm. Uh, account. Yeah, so they don't got to pay it all up front right there. It makes right. more sense for them to be like, oh, I'd rather pay forty two dollars a month for four months or six months or whatever, and then um, have it have it that way. So yeah, I I would say it is more towards consumers because I think even on the business aspect, like if somebody finances, let's say a mentorship through you, you're not even going to get paid fully. I think you're only getting 25%. Yep. Oh, when they utilize. Something yeah. Like so that? like if somebody, if somebody bought your mentorship with Afterpay, you're not going to get the 5,000 from Afterpay. You're only going to get 25% of the 5,000. Yeah. Because they financed it. They took all the risk. That's, that's what that, that's the downside of that as well. So I'm only going to get. They're going to take seventy five percent. Yeah, bro. Yeah, for fi- for crazy. financing it for you. Yeah, because they're taking all the in their mind. They're taking all the risk, right? Because they're putting they're putting up all the money, and the person is. Paying and they that. are essentially. Then why yeah. would I offer that? Why would I offer? Th- that's well, why I don't offer. Well, this, so, <laughs> I don't offer that. So I say this. I say this. It's, it's, it's really it's really misleading. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really not great <laughs> for the consumer. It's a consumer. Not great for the business owner either. No, no, like. not for the business owner. It's actually owner at all. great for a business owner that's actually. So f- f- just listen to me. Okay. okay. You hey, have I'm to understand you. business. Let me hear you. And there's always bad business and good business. And this world was built on it. And that's why you're in it. All right. Okay. And in actuality, guess what? You already know they're not going to fucking finish. Okay, because they're getting it on credit. <laughs> Why don't you get that twenty five percent? Just like people do. Yeah. this is old school application like, fees. No, in, it's like a write off. In, in this is that, old school application fees with you applying for apartments. That, that is exactly what that is. Okay. Yeah. I'm not playing with you. And the thing goes around and around. Nothing new under the sun. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, if you're a bad business person and you sit there and go, hey, that's just extra dollars. We can't. We can't say what the consumer's gonna do. But essentially, why wouldn't we tap into that money? But, all right, hear me out, Jazz. Hear me out, I Jazz. know it's not good. Out, I got a $5,000 yeah. ticket, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. 25% is 1500 No, less than that. Okay. Like twelve, twelve fifty, right? 25% of 5000 Yeah. Yep, twelve fifty. Twelve fifty. Yeah, twelve fifty. So I'm going to take twelve fifty mm-hmm. of a $5,000 ticket. Mm-hmm. I may or may not have expenses attached to that five thousand dollar ticket to fulfill that five 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 meaning i got a a, a, a va all in the group. or i'm paying they're this all in the group bro you, they're all in the group oh no man what time. if my what if what if my what if my cost you to fulfill each five thousand dollar ticket is is two thousand dollars the thing is is understanding and maximizing so if you're only selling five five slots and you need the other ones picked up just pick the shit up you're still getting in the market and you still got people in the damn room See, you need to understand business <laughs> and stop crying about you. See, you want to know something? You want to know something about niggas? I'm just saying this straight up. You always want the five thousand. Guess who's counting the little change? No, no, but I'm not the saying Asians I need the whole five. And the Mexicans <laughs> and I the always, Indians too that come in and they I take your penny. I don't need the whole five because I probably didn't system. Like I just said, my expense to fulfill on the five Hopefully is two. Hopefully, you systemize it so you take. No, you want to sit there and not. Yeah, you gotta pay so for I'm, your time. I'm already taking three out of the out of the five because my expense to fulfill is two. Yeah, I see so what my, you're saying. As long as the numbers make sense, though, it, it makes sense. To, to, I see what you're saying. No, I, I see what you're saying. And but I hate to say it, but I'm, not, I'm a though. good businesswoman, so no, I'm not going to set that person up. Yeah. But guess what? Corporate yeah. America is, and they oh, do it all day, oh, and they don't give they? a f about you. The only people that care is a small a business bit. person. Yep. So, Come on, so, talk to me. So talk the, to me. So the so the so the message is, you got to make sure before doing afterpay for your business that the numbers make sense. Because I'd be down if I just say, oh yeah, I'm gonna do afterpay and I'm gonna take the 25, but then I'm coming out of pocket. Either yep. you're uh, per proof person. of concept already and everybody's paying to get in your door, right? Mm-hmm. Or you can only get those five people and you got to make up for the other 10. It's still money. You still get to teach someone. You still get yeah. to land yeah, on someone true. and for them to actually bet on themselves again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like you got to look at it in perspective. Like this guy said, well, well, I'm like him. Well, you just said they ain't going to fucking fit in anyway. So. Um, listen, <laughs> one thing I know is it's just like having children. So you want to talk about them? You can talk about your children. It's a 50, 50% yeah. chance they going all up in the same house. Are they going to be in jail? Are they going to be right there in college? We don't know. Are they going to be an entrepreneur? All of that is really a chance. We don't know. 
We don't. We can't. We can't control that. So but what you can't control is your pockets and what's coming in. Yeah, facts. <laughs> so Jazz, you get you setting up after pay for your consulting business. I might, but I might make it a realistic approach, like a two hundred dollar shoe thing. You know, like if you want to have a conversation sense. with me, like I care about what I. I put think that out. makes sense. Like I'm God fearing, and guess what? When I give it. I really want to give something back. Now, is it going to be my high ticket item? No. That makes you sense. can't afford yeah, that. that. But the thing that God gave me for free to talk to my purpose, why not give it on afterpay? You might actually do something. That makes sense. So but I'm that very makes passionate sense. about the consumer and me and all of it in the business aspect. That's why I develop real people with portfolios. Like, yeah. yeah. But you got to put things in perspective. But to me, that makes like sense, though. Yeah. Like, or you got a $5,000 ticket, maybe not, but if I create like a software or something like that, mm-hmm. yep. that it has a $200 mm-hmm. ticket. Okay, that makes more I could sense. Take, I could take $50. I could take this $50. Was a be- I like this. I like this conversation. Because yeah. I mean, I created the software one time. One time, and you, yeah, but I, yeah. I but, could take $50 yep. if yeah. 100%. If, if, and even just sound like Dijon, you have three different products. I heard. Yep. Yes. You know, like that, and you, you're like me. Like you are impactful. Oh, absolutely. You speak from your heart and from absolutely. what you've been through, and you can't buy that. No. That experience God allowed you to go through and still be here every day. Fine. Put after pay on that. Yes. <laughs> you know. But, what I, mean? I, but I, I do. I do. And, want really, to. and it might even be a recording. Yeah. yeah. It might even be a recording. But put after pay on that, and then guess what? If you to the next thing, you get to talk to me. But we'll see how much you bet on yourself after the recorder. Yeah, like, yep. I, I'm serious. But I'm gonna reiterate: if I'm if I'm if I'm coaching or doing some type of consult <laughs> cons, uh, consultations, mm-hmm. right? I'll be damned if I'm gonna come out of pocket to help you because Afterpay took seventy five percent. But guess mm. what? That's why I already mm-hmm. sat there and I guess what I did for him. He put the first call in a recording. Yeah, no, no, yeah. So guess that, what? My twenty five percent. I'm still having my twenty five percent. That's an if then to see if you're gonna show up to the next call. Because yeah. I'm not gonna show up. My time is money. So all right. So the buy now, pay now, <laughs> start, the buy now, pay later services is what? Low ticket item. Low, low t- ticket low, item. Low, low ticket items. <laughs> low right. ticket items only. Um, <laughs> are you are you caring about the rewards some of these credit cards are offering? Because that's one thing we didn't really mm. touch touch base on is like some of the rewards, cash back, traveling, whatever that might be. Are you also looking at that? Because I know we for the stack and we said we're looking at what banks are pulling from which reports. Mm-hmm. But how do you also now analyze the rewards? Where did that Ooh. come into the strategy? That's that. Big way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Great question. Yeah. So the rewards are very, very important to me, in my opinion. Um, so it really just depends on what I'm going for. Right. So if I'm really looking to leverage. Right. Um, then. You know, if I'm looking strictly just for 0% interest, then, you know, I'm maybe probably looking for something more. So, like, maybe I'll go with it. Let's say the U.S. Bank Platinum Business Card, right? It's 0% for 18 months. But you get it has no perks whatsoever because it's, but that's because but it's 0% for, yeah, interest, right? 0% interest. As opposed to, you know, let's say, you know, a, a cash back credit card that has 3%, right? So, you know, for something like that, right, let's say that you do payroll. You're going to want to use that 3% cash back credit card. Why? Because you're getting 3% of all the money that you spend on that. Same thing with travel, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I'm a big advocate of rewards. Rewards are very important. Um, it just depends on what you're looking for, right? Uh, I love to travel. So, like, I, you know, traveling um, credit cards are for me, right? Airline credit cards like that. I like statuses. Mm-hmm. I like to stay in nice hotels. I like to have uh, nice rental cars, things like that. So, like, you know, a lot of these credit cards come with, with perks, Right. Depending on what you get. Right. So like if you get the uh, Marriott Bonvoy card from American Express. Right. It's a seven hundred dollar a month fee. But you also you get you get you get a Marriott Diamond status immediately. Mm. Right. And that's super beneficial. Right. Especially if you're a traveler, because you're you know, you're literally getting time a month. Fee, yeah, right. no, $700 a year. A year. Oh, annual okay. fee. That's like, $700 I, I, annual fee. I was like, my bank is No, no, $700 annual fee. Did I say monthly? No, yeah, yeah, but I had did. Did I? Okay, I, yeah. I instantly thought you racism. Sure. Yeah. I'm like, who? who, who? <laughs> no, no, no. But I was like, that's geared to somebody, but I, I, I knew, I figured that that was just, you yeah, know, for sure. he just that's has a, a lot of information. Say, that's yeah. some classic shit. Yeah, no, it's, um, yeah, shit right there. Um, the annual fee a year, though, but, but, it outweighs it, right? Because if you're if you're a big it traveler, yeah, no, seven hundred seven hundred annually, right? Is way and you're getting monthly. diamond. Come yeah. on, diamond Hilton. I agree. And dude, it's like times sixteen on your points. Yep. Yep. Mm. So imagine you go to Hilton, you spend five hundred dollars. Yep. yep. That you're getting that. times sixteen on those points. Mm. Five hundred dollars times. Yeah, kids, yeah, family, bro, like, ugh. dude, that's like a week free stay just right there. You literally you stayed for a week and you got a free week just off the diamond status. So mm. that that's where that status comes in is very important. Same thing with airlines, bro. 
like Delta, right? If you want to get uh, Delta Platinum, right? Like you're going to get the rewards points of getting, of maximizing however much you spend as opposed to, you know, just being Delta Silver, say, right? right. You're only getting one time, you know, uh, dollar for dollar points, say. But if you have, let's say, a higher status, you know, you're getting times five points, you know, and all that is relevant because we could use that to travel for free. Mm -hmm. um, and another play you could do too is, uh, you know, you could use the rewards points to, to, to book free flights, right? So like you can manufacture spend, mm -hmm. right? So let's mm -hmm. say that, you know, you have a credit card that's giving three, three times points or whatever, right? Each month you could say, let's say, you know, you can go get some gift cards. Let's say, you know, we bought a couple thousand dollars worth of gift cards. You know, you take the gift card, turn them into money orders, deposit it back into the bank account, and then just pay the credit card off. Mm -hmm. So essentially, you're using the credit card's own money to get free rewards. Mm -hmm. And then you could book flights, you could book hotels, simply just off your rewards points. You don't even have to spend your own money. That was a very interesting way on how you mm -hmm. talked about the manufacturer spending. Mm -hmm. Because I heard the manufacturer spending done a, Differently. Di a, di uh -huh. a whole different way. Yeah. yeah. With like with uh like mer with merchandise. merchandise. You can it's do true. you can do that too. So no, like, but like I think I like this one better. You California. You get it. Yeah, yeah. I think I like that one better yeah, though. Yeah, you you could yeah. yeah. you, you, like you could bust the play with the uh yep. Um yep. The gift cards just seem it seems safer and it don't pull on my Conscious my ethics, so yeah, my ethics bro. Straight. yeah. The the the, yep. the 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 merchandise one, even like even not all it's things that are legal are variables. ethical, right? Just like not yeah, all things, yeah. um, mm -hmm. uh, unethical are legal, and it just feels like it's something a little little, little, little shady know. with the, yep. the the it's merchandise true. spending, yep, just to return it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yep. I like that way. So buying gift cards and then using the gift cards, turning them into money orders. Or how do you get yeah. the cash off yeah, the gift then, card? Yeah, and then great you question. literally cash your money on it. Yeah, great question. So yeah, I, I, you got it. You got it? I got it. All right, you got it. Come yeah, on. It. So you take so you take the so you take the gift card and you get a money order with you, it. We got it. Yep. I got it. <laughs> All right, come on, Jeff. Yeah, give, no. give it to him. Oh, you want me to say it? Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, you, oh, I thought you what oh, yeah, you said I'm, about I'm it. The way you're saying it, I'm like, is it is this ethical? No, it's that's why I'm like, we got it. My guy, you know. Yeah. So all right, so share with us. So essentially. Yeah. What, he, what LaShawn said was, hey, you're going to take your credit card that he got you, and you're going to go buy a money order. And then you're going to go, I mean, sorry. A vanilla, a, the, you're going to go buy a the no, old vanilla gift card. The specific vanilla gift card. For someone. Gift card. And then with that gift card, you're going to go buy a money order. And then with that money order, you're going to pay whoever it is, whatever bank account it is. And even then, I'm going to give you another play. You then could take that money order, like it's a payment. For your business, so you're showing revenue, yep, right? You can and then you're too. putting it into your 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 business bank account, mm -hmm. so that now you're showing that eight to ten thousand dollars revenue. Yep. So now you really want to then go bust that other play for yep. a month and say I'm getting that hundred and fifty yep. actually from a loan now and not in credit cards no more. Yeah. But blah blah blah. Yeah, and you're you traveling know. for free though. Blah, 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 yeah, yeah. And, you travel, yeah, yeah. And, and it's all the other manufacturing rewards and, wait, and, and benefits. And you're traveling for free. Wait, so you're doing yeah. this on the on, yeah. you on the, the travel card? Yeah, so, so you can get free points. Yeah. Because here's oh, the thing, right? So here's the thing. So like, let's say, I mean, you know, uh, so the vanilla gift cards, I'm sorry, specific, the, the, it has to be the vanilla gift cards, right? Uh, they go up to $500, the $500 vanilla gift cards. Everybody knows them. You could buy them at Walgreens, and my Albertsons, don't burn out after Walmart, them. right? You buy them anywhere. <laughs> so literally, you just go in there, bro. I'll go up in there. I'll... I'll drop four thousand five. I'm like, how much gift cards you got? You got ten of them. I got 000. ten. Kids. I want ten. I want ten five hundred dollar <laughs> gift cards right now. Boom, swipe it. Five racks, right? You take the gift cards. You go to plus the fees. You, yeah, plus fees. but yeah, yeah, minus any fees, right? So you take the gift card. You take that to the uh, the post office. You get a money order. It's only gonna cost you two dollars, right? You take the money order. Um, they're they're gonna allow you to buy the money order with the gift card. Right. But that's why it has to be a vanilla gift card, though. Right. So they, they're going to allow you to buy the buy it with the gift card. You're going to literally take the money order and you're just going to deposit it into your bank account and then you're going to pay the card off. Right. So let's say that, you know, you acquired a seven dollar. Let's say that it costs you seven dollars um, to bust the whole play. Right. So let's say that at the end of the day, you're walking away with four hundred and ninety three dollars right out of five hundred. Um, but as long as the, the points make more sense, right? So let's say that you're getting times three or times five points, right? Or maybe you're going after a welcome offer because mm -hmm. a lot of these, some of these uh, credit cards have welcome bonuses, right? So let's say, you know, I know um, Amex Platinum, mm -hmm. I think they have 180,000 uh, bonus right now if you spend 8,500, right? Um, in the first three <laughs> months, I, I know, believe, right? I know. So, so think about that. That's $1,800 yeah. 
in 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 points, eighteen hundred dollars in free money yeah. to spend eighty five hundred. What am I gonna go do? I'm gonna go buy eighty five hundred dollars worth of gift cards because it's it ain't gonna cost me eighteen hundred dollars. So you see how I'm making money. Yeah. You're you making money. It only costs you really like the forty dollars for the, the gift cards. Seven dollars minus seven. ten, so seventy dollars. It cost me, and yeah. I and I and I got eighteen hundred dollars in free in free points. Got so yeah. what is that? That's what is that? Seventeen seventeen seventy. Conservatively yeah. speaking, that's what yeah. I'm like. Conservatively speaking, almost eighteen hundred. Okay. Yeah. You know, yeah, even like, with my time and my gas and whatever. Oh, yeah, there you, you go. Know, yeah, yeah. I mean, but that, but that, that shit, that ain't nothing. Time is a lot. You can't get it back. But yeah. the, Walgreens, <laughs> the Walgreens is right up the street. And yeah. the post office is right up the street. Yeah. It depends on where you live. No, I yeah. like, you explained it better. I know I went off on a whole nother thing. Yeah. No, but you're good. Thing, but I think that, you Dang. know, yeah, that, when we I mastermind, like, we get more. Yeah. I do, like, I do like your addition, too, though. But instead of just paying it right back, setting it up as like a like a payment to the business. Right, so yeah, essentially you pay it to the business, and then you put it back into the other one. That's smart, yeah. Because essentially you're building this business, and you're paying this back for the I didn't think I about like that. I like to win. In every house that I do, I, I eat three ways. So I love to add to you, too. So, yeah, I, mean, I so, like so, that. So, you can't keep it out to yeah, yourself. Yeah. So, you, so you're <laughs> going to deposit it into He's the business checking account. Mm-hmm. Giving us gems. So you're going to deposit it into the business checking account, and then pay the, and then pay the credit card yeah, off. Yeah, because you never yep. know if you might have a bankruptcy or not. You still got this other one. It's other funding company. Yeah. So, you know, that's mm-hmm. making that happen. Yeah. Um, that's dope. I do yeah, have a really hot question for you. Yeah. And it just because I really, like, for me, I think I have to reel this all in for our, our listeners. Yeah. Because I, I like you. I like you. Thank After you. talking to you, I've reeled you. You've you, you been ready for me, too. Thank you. Even my little time when I have a question. <laughs> this is my other question. It is a lot to keep up with this stuff. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's a, you have a different cadence in your head. Mm-hmm. Because you have a passion for it, but what do you give to your mentees to actually support them with these dates, these times, yeah, payments, managing all of this stuff? What do you 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 essentially what comes in your package to make sure that your mentees are successful? Yeah, yeah, great question. So yeah, within my package, uh, I do one on one coaching with them for sixteen weeks. So it's it's literally we. It's tailored specifically to their situation. So we're, we get on calls uh, bi-monthly. So uh, I have actually have a call with one of my mentees tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, so it's just it's just one-on-one personal coaching. So any any questions they do have, um, they can reach out to me. They have my personal phone number. So, you know, if, if they have any hiccups or anything like that, or maybe, you know, if they're, you know, uh, some of them may be having trouble, let's say, getting a deletion, yeah. right? So they want to reach out and maybe see, you know, a different avenue that we could hit or something. Um, but I would say, yeah, just personal coaching from me um, and just just educating them in general, um, because it's just like I say, financial education is big. Um, you know, you, any spreadsheets or things like that. Oh, that's what that. I, I was thinking of, because it's like, man, I want to come and I'm like, when I pay this or when I pay that, is there any like spreadsheet for me to remember? I, I have, and I was like, going to say the same thing. If I have like, high value cards, like you have so much information in yeah. your head. Like, I mean. Kudos to you. Oh yeah. For oh that. Oh, like, like if, if you, I put if it you, on a spreadsheet, you, like if you create or if like, you just create we, it, one oh, yeah, that people can us, plug like and if play. If I consume, like if I actually like patronize you, like what do I get to make sure that I can keep up with all like majority of like the basics of information mm-hmm. in my head, even though I know you do this every day, like I okay. don't. I think okay. It's, I think it's yeah, spreadsheet. Yeah, yeah, spreadsheet then. Crazy. Okay, yeah. yeah that's for what sure. I was wondering. Okay. Like, do you give us? Okay. Do you give absolutely. anybody? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Right. Um, yeah, there's a lot of information. So um, I have courses. So within my personal mentorship, um, they get a, a credit repair course, which is step by step. So a lot of people, you know, depending on what type of accounts, um, you know, it determines how you dispute it, right? So how you dispute a collection is not how you dispute a charge off. Correct. Right. And then there's different type of collections. Right. There's credit card collections. There's medical collections. There's paid collections. There's clothes collections. Right. So there's different type of collections. And depending on the type, um, that's how you attack the account. So within that is is step by step videos, um, the business funding aspect. Right. So what that is, is how to build out your personal report, how to structure your LLC mm-hmm. correctly for maximum results and then how to leverage other people's money via credit card stacking and things like that. How to maximize your points, how to travel hack. Right. You know, travel for free, things like that. Um, and then uh, buy coaching as well. But within that, yeah, within the courses, there's spreadsheets, there's templates, there's there's uh, how to's, nice. you know, everything nice. like everything is is yeah, is, is, is all there. Yeah, Tempest everything is all there. Sure. Cause I'm, I was thinking like jazz. I'm like, I wonder if there's like some type of like automatic. I'm thinking like, okay, if 
Like can 12 cards, not that about you. Yeah, yeah. Like how can I put like all these cards into a spreadsheet that mm-hmm. automatically calculates mm-hmm. like the balance with like the yep. reporting My date rewards. and the due date, the report, the, the yep. rewards, like all that so I can have it in one, one place. Yep. To kind of see, oh, this one is coming up. This one's coming up. Okay, now. And I'm I maximizing one. my credit ability. Yeah. Yep. You know, like, that's what I hear from Deshaun is that he has essentially mastered maximizing his credit and other people's credit. You know, my thing is that 60-year-old, can you remember? <laughs> yeah. can you, even, even if they only want five cards, can you actually remember what rewards go with what card? Ooh. And how do I keep up with mm-hmm. that? Yeah. When I come and I patronize that. Do you care about me enough to say, hey, yeah, my memory isn't as great as that 25-year-old or that 30-year-old that's running <laughs> yeah. circles around me giving me this info? Then I'm also yeah. thinking about having that fat-ass wallet with 12 cards in it. Yeah. Like, Damn, I didn't get the wrong card. card. I didn't get the wrong and card. And I have to reconcile this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because I definitely I definitely remember I want to know which one I'm taking out today. and mom using the yeah. wrong cards before. Mm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I've done it. And these were I've debit cards. It. So that's, that's why mm-hmm. I asked that. I'm like, hey, I kind of want to patronize this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? But yeah. I'm like, am I going to get something to organize myself? Because mm-hmm. my head is like your head. It's a 10. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 And, and especially if we want to take it to the same level do. as you. Mm-hmm. Taking it to the same level as you is like, it's like a, a, a kindergartner getting boosted up to middle school and just like all this information yeah. yep. you get introduced to for the first time. You're like, okay, yeah. I'm smart. I'm one of the smartest kindergartners to get boosted here, but I, this is the first time I'm seeing this though. This is a whole mm-hmm. different mm-hmm. lane, a whole different lifestyle. So uh, it's, it's a little bit uh, of, a, of a mindset shift uh, and a, a practicality shift on like oh, yeah. activities and yep. how you manage and all this. Yeah, time management. Yep, yep. Um, Financial management in general. It's, all, yeah, it's all a part of it. Now, I know you say, because you hate paying interest. You don't, you <laughs> yep. don't like paying interest. Nope, um, not at all. According to Experian, in, uh, in, in 2023, Americans paid an estimated $20 billion in, in, in interest Jesus last Christ. year, right? So <laughs> Now, that's a number I don't like. <laughs> $20 billion in interest. Man. Last year alone, wow. with that with that being the statistic, clearly a lot of people are not like you, or they are, but yeah. they just don't know how. They just so don't like. Know what how. are some tools and methods that people can like, like, pay their credit cards or just kind of minimize paying interest and stuff like that? The best, like, managing this again. Yeah, yeah, great question, great question. So yeah, I would recommend on the personal side, um, if you have credit cards, say, and you don't want to pay the interest on it, um, I would recommend you can apply for an additional credit card that has no balance transfer fees and 0% interest as well, right? And then you can literally just transfer that balance so you're not stuck with that high interest. No, ba- Okay, Do, so, so those exist, no balance transfer fees. Yes, so yep, there, yep. So um, depending on the card, um, but so some cards will say 0% interest on purchases for 12 months. So you have to be very specific, but some cards will say 0% interest on purchases and balance transfers for mm. 12 months. So you have to be real specific. And if it is a card that has that balance transfer, 0% interest, then you can go ahead and literally just transfer that balance so you're not paying that interest every month, especially if you're making minimum payments, which I don't recommend people do either because that's how you... Like a, if you owe $5,000 and you're paying the minimum payment, you're literally you're gonna, you're never going to get out. You're never going to get out of debt. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's essential. I would say, yeah, try to make more than the monthly payment if possible, um, if you're paying interest. Obviously, you know, if you're leveraging, right? So, like, for me, when I leverage, I don't. I pay the minimum payment for a minute, right? So, like, if I have a 0% interest card for 12 months and I use all, let's say, 20000 I use it all on there. Like, I'll make the minimum payment for probably, like, eight months but i'm i'm I'm, i am generating money and i can pay it off but i'm not really too focused on it and then once it comes later then i'll just boom boom pay it off Thirteen thousand, fifteen thousand, one payout right because i've been accumulating this let's say for five or eight months and you don't want to necessarily liquidate like your 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 you don't want to just kind of give up all that i don't want to give up all the cash up exactly there's no there's no need for it right yeah it's like is if it's if it's not acquiring any interest, why would I have to worry about the monthly payment, right? As long as I'm, you know, but I, you know, as long as you're being mindful, I'm making sure that you know the profits are making sense though as you well. You know what I would love for you to touch on, which a lot of people would never touch on. Mm. Well, but like for example, like I remember back in the day when I was younger and I was going to buy my first house, and so I used my car as leverage. Okay. Okay. This old shit. So, um, and people don't understand how long they need to be paying a certain vehicle for it to actually be a benefit to your credit. Okay. Do you know about that? 
Okay, yes, yes. So, you, so like some people will get something and they'll pay it right off, but it didn't benefit you. No, no. Credit wise, no. because you didn't have the extent of the time that nope. it needed to show the actual history and the value that you have some type of credibility of paying it back. Yes. I never hear anybody talk about that. Right. Um, like, oh, you say like if you, if a, in a specific month. For example, spent, a car, okay? You yeah. go and get a car. Make sure that, so when you sat there and you talked about you paid for eight months, when you get a car, you're definitely never going to not pay over under nine months. Oh, yeah, for okay? sure. Because I'll, under nine months, it doesn't matter. So then you want your credit to shoot up a bunch when you pay it off? Yeah. It's not going to happen for nope, you nope. if you do it in three months. Who's you paying off be, a car? I mean, who's paying off a car in under nine months? The regular person. Some people do. Or they just yeah, go, like, like you, you got to understand like, why you're using your credit and then is it the, a, another variable like to a, it. There's time. A new car? Like a newly financed car? Yes. Yeah, I think she's saying like, I think she's saying like, so... Somebody might put it on a credit card because they don't want to pay that interest. Yeah. You you understand? But you have to think about when you're actually going to do it to lower the interest. This guy doesn't like interest, right? So essentially, I'll take my $20,000 card and pay off my whole fucking car. But... And I reduced the interest. Mm, uh, I, listen, yeah, you I feel see me? What you're okay, I've okay. So I'm saying to you, <laughs> I essentially, about I'm a I'm master know. strategist. I do I didn't think business about and that. real you estate. You literally could. Okay, and I do high ticket items. Real wow. estate is the highest ticket item you can do. So you've got to understand every, everything to be able to do that. So, yeah, so essentially, right, you sit there and how long does it take? Like, I would love for you to talk about how long to pay a house. How long to pay a credit card? How long to pay something before you pay it off? Yeah, you yeah. people like to be debt free. Yeah, but what's the real game you're playing here? Yeah, great question. So, so you're saying for it to, before for people the count love to get to the eight hundred club. You want to know right. how you get to the eight hundred club? Have Knowing his, when to pay it off. Yeah, have, yeah. having history, right? Yeah. So like you <laughs> know, uh, and that's pay, payment history is thirty five percent of your credit score, yeah. right? So like you know, having a lot of history, um, this you know, is what is I'm good, talking right? About. So like if if you have a car. Right. And it's not, you know, you know, you can pay it off fine. You're not in no financial hardship. It's not bringing you any, you know, you don't have any obligation to pay it off any faster to benefit your future. I would literally just ride it out. So like if you have a si- a 60 month auto loan, ride the whole thing out. Why? Because that's 60 months of payment history. Mm-hmm. That's going to that is going to have more of an impact than paying it off in nine months. But no, hold months, on. Right? Hold on. Go ahead. Say that you want. So boom, this is how I bought my first home. With better interest. Oh, you're talking about the debt to income. Not just the debt to income, but also shooting your credit up. So people want to shoot their credit score up, right? Just like you go on rent.com this, that, uh, to create history and to make sure that you have something to then shoot your credit up. Because yeah. it's about credibility. Yeah. Okay? Uh-huh. So, right? You sit there and you're going to pay this car. But over time, it really doesn't amount to anything. Like, There's a limit of the time. That you're gonna get the benefit of the credit score. Like there's this game that you're playing. It's just like the algorithm of everything. Yeah. Everything. <laughs> I, I I can't. T- everything in business. Everything in the world is the same. But if I pay it off, too, though. trust me. There's a chart. There's a back system of like how much money. But for let's go back to what I was saying. Meaning, boom, you buy this car. Mm-hmm. So if you pay it over nine months, it's still not gonna give you any no. more benefit than if you. Do it at the nine month mark. Okay? After nine months? After nine months. But if you pay before nine months, you're not gonna get the shoot, the shoot up. Yeah, yeah. To the number to the highest that number makes sense. of max, So okay? for a car you might only get nine you months. might only get ten points. Right? If you do it after nine months, you'll get twenty five points. Mm-hmm. Okay, so okay? after nine months, but if This you, is a point game. But is it any time after nine months now or is there before That's what, ten months? Well me, I know my number I know nine months. I know nothing <laughs> under nine months. But I'm asking this guy that monitors credit all the time and I wanna stretch him in that too, so that he focuses on that because I want him to come back to me and tell me that. Cause then we're gonna do some other stuff. Man, I like I masterminds. Like, yeah, absolutely. I like people that really like to actually trailblaze. No, for sure. We ain't following. We leading. We leading. Let's get it. Let's to, get I'm it. Just, I'm just trying to think like... There's, and then there's to everything to a car and then a house too. And then a credit card too. And then every single thing that you plan. A line of credit too. It all is in the game. It but is. If, but all right, but let me ask you this though. Mm-hmm. If we want history, if I pay off that car mm-hmm. in 12 months... Mm-hmm. When I got a sixty month mm-hmm. contract with him, you just paying interest to them. No, I, I get that. I okay, get that. but I'm saying if I paid it off in twelve months, mm-hmm. aren't they going to close that account? Mm-hmm. It's yep, still a closed will. account that got the benefit that it needed from the time it needed to be seasoned. 
Mm-hmm. You following me? You got, I got. I get what you're saying. I, I There's a certain to... amount of season time for you to get the actual credit benefit, the yeah, number benefit. Yeah, yeah. But you That's need to true. know that number on the point scale in the back end of basically you're studying the people that give you credit but and now, what then how they get paid on it. But now it's the same with lending. In uh, go ahead. But now I just need to know that <laughs> if I go back around three years from now to go apply for some more credit, I need to replace. I now need to replace that car with another primary account. No, so remember what this guy said about accounts. What's his What's his criteria? What's his What's your What's ten? Your, ten. But ten. if I and got it can rid be of the closed car or opened, it just has to be. It, so what? It's just like mine. Mine's still on there from back then. It's still a line of credit, <laughs> and it's a and it's an approved good line of credit, and it was paid off in a certain amount of time, and it did what it needed to do in that time to boost my credit. It's a still a good. It was. It's a good. Hmm. Line of credit. It may not be an open line of credit. Now, there, now let's talk about open line of credits that you need to have. But that's different. That's why you patronize this guy. This shit just gave, if you my, don't know. gave me a headache. No, I know. <laughs> I'm getting out of the seat. Y'all don't ever want to talk to me. Because really, I really, that's what I'm telling you. I've, I've been doing a lot, but I want to get with you. Yeah. Because you study credit mm-hmm. and you can teach me a lot more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I know that already. Yeah. I heard you talking about that vanilla coffee. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you that. <laughs> that, that light skin ain't seen. <laughs> hey, I man, appreciate I, it. Dre, Dre, I think, it, I think, I think um, if my head start hurting, I, I'm pretty sure the audience head starting to hurt too, man. <laughs> no, my head started hurting when, when he started telling me because he has some real stuff in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and and it's, it's, it's so much information we could take on before we get analysis paralysis. And I don't want the audience to be like staggered and stuck with mm. the information, not knowing what to do with it. So if you could, right, give our audience the first three steps they should take after after listening to this conversation we just had today. Yeah, great question. Yeah, so um, if they want to be entrepreneurs and they're looking to start their own business, mm-hmm. so the first thing you need to do is you need to audit your credit report. Go back and write down all my data points, the 10 primary accounts, utilization under 10%, at least one credit card with 5,000, preferably 10,000, though. 10,000 is where you're really going to 10,000 or more is really where you're going to get them high limits. Um, average age of four years and uh, no more than three inquiries in each bureau and zero within the last six months. I would say structure your report like that, the bare minimum. That's just the bare minimum, right? If you can get more than that, then definitely do more, right? More is always better when it comes to credit simply because it makes you look more credible, right? So if I come in, like, let's say that you have 10 accounts, you go to the bank, you look great. I come into the bank, I got 30 accounts, my credit report is going to look, it's just going to be a lot more thicker and more presentable, right? Um, so more is always better with credit. So that's the first thing you need to do is structure your credit correctly. Start building that out. The next thing you need to do is you need to open up an LLC, right? And when you open up an LLC, you need to make sure to structure it properly. What does that look like? So you need to have a business address, right? You don't see, you know, you don't have Walmart working out of their house, right? They actually have a, a address, Right. So that's the first thing you need to do. And how you could do that is you don't actually have to get an address. Right. You don't have to go to an office and lease a building. Right. Do all this stuff. They have something called virtual office spaces. Right. Where you can just get a virtual office address that is that's just specifically going to look good on paper. Right. So you need to get your address. You need to get your email phone number, right? A 1-800 number though. Don't use a cell phone number for your business, right? You need to have a 1-800 number. Same thing as Walmart, Starbucks, all these corporations, they got 1-800 numbers. We're going to present ourselves as a corporation the same exact type you of way. You go to Regis for that, right? Uh, great question. So Regis is for the office uh, oh, address. Okay, so Regis, Opus Virtual Office, Alliant Virtual Office, those are some ones. I have another question outside of that just because you know those virtual offices, they really crack down on that in banking. Have you found any way to get around that? Yeah, great question. So it it you need to Google your actual office before you get it. Uh, because sometimes, um, depending on what website you go, so like with Regus.com and stuff like that, all the virtual offices that we have been doing have been going pretty solid. They haven't been having any red flags. But okay. what I have seen, though, is um, there are some office spaces that raise red flags. So... Um, I postal, right? So they sell virtual offices and they're really cheap, but sometimes they'll give you one that's like attached to a Staples or a UPS. Mm. And that's where it's going to be a red flag. So you need to make sure before you buy an office, you need to Google it and make sure that it's in an actual building and it looks legit. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and like I say, if you do that through Regus.com, it should be good to go. Um, so yeah, next thing you structure your report 
And then I would say the very next thing you need to do, um, depending on what your business is, is find a mentor. You need to find somebody who's doing exactly what you want to do and you need to pay them to teach you how to do it. Um, and that would be my recommendation leaving this podcast today for everybody who is interested in becoming an entrepreneur and wanting to start a business and get into credit and things like that. That's exactly what you need to do. Man, that's a blessing. I, I definitely know. like that third one. And and not too many people hone in on getting that mentor. And yeah. It's the same thing. Like if you want to get a trade, you go to a trade school. Yeah. Yep. If you don't know what you want to do. You go to college for most people. Right. Yep. And, and, and we find it so easy to go into debt, to go to these things. But all of a sudden, if when it comes to, entrepreneurship is I got to do this by myself right. mm -hmm. and I don't, int I don't invest in them in a mentor. Yeah. So I like that you, that you uh, gave praise to the mentor and, and you really honed in on the importance of the mentor. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. I really like this episode for a lot of reasons. I think the main thing is just again, honing in on some of these strategies mm -hmm. and getting a little, diving a little bit deeper into like, credit card utilization, yep. how to manage this yep. and, and, and manage debt, circle debt and stuff like mm -hmm. that. I, I don't think we had those conversations as in depth as we had today. Right. So I appreciate you, Dre. Jazz, how you feel about today's conversation? I feel like it was awesome. I think we, we, we strive on, you know, just trying to filter out the, do, the do's and don'ts mm -hmm. for our audience and just making sure that it's, it's really credible people here. And so I'm grateful to have you on and even to hear some new things and for our audience to hear new things and be able to really, really credit you up because I think that the people that are really doing the work, um, it shines and it shows. Absolutely. For sure. Dre, tell our listeners a little bit more about where they can find you, anything special you got going on, some news, updates. Now I want your time, you know, is the time to kind of share that. Yeah, yeah, I see. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you can find me on Instagram, um, at Dre underscore credit. That's my IG name. Um, any guys interested in working with me, you guys can reach out to me. Just let me know. You guys see me on the podcast. Um, I'm pretty good at answering DMs for the most part if they seem, I guess, important. I guess you can't yeah. say. If it, <laughs> if it, you know, so, you know, if I do see anybody reach out to me saying they see me on the podcast, you know, if you're interested in working with me, we can definitely get something connected. Anybody who's interested in, you know, maybe starting their own credit repair business or funding company, anything like that, you could definitely tap in. Um and just let me know on the podcast, man, because we could definitely get you, uh, definitely get you a discount. Definitely show some love for, uh, you know, you reaching out, seeing me on the podcast. So there's some benefits in that. Um, and just what I got going right now, yeah. So what we got, um, I do, I do credit repair, obviously funding, and I have a mentorship for that. And like I was saying earlier, it is 16 weeks. We're gonna dive deep. Um, and it, even if you don't do credit, right? Like it, it, this is for any business owner that's looking to get a hundred thousand dollars in funding. Right. Like my mentorship is not specific to people about credit. You don't I have mentees that they have their own businesses. They're in fitness businesses. They do all these other things. They don't even do credit, but they come to me because I can get them access to that capital. So essentially, anybody that's looking to get access to capital, you could definitely tap in with me um, and we can just get it going, man, because there, there's a lot more. We, we teach you how to run ads. We teach you how to do content. Mm -hmm. We teach you how to scale your business. We teach you how to set up automations, your systems, your funnels, websites, everything like that wow. all comes within the mentorship. So it's just a lot deeper than credit as well. Mm. Yep. Dope, dope. Love it. Yeah, man. Hey, I, I need y'all to go ahead and DM Dre the keywords MDM. Feel so that me. way he don't just look at that DM and be like, nah, this ain't important. He's going to see MDM and he's going to know that y'all mean business. Right? Facts. He's going to hook y'all up. Man, Dre, I appreciate you joining in and tapping in with us this, yes. this Saturday, yes, all the way from California. Yes, and, absolutely. And, um, man, uh, you know, it, it's, it's just been a pleasure. Y'all just heard from Dre Credit. I'm your guy, Kai Speaks. You just heard from Heavy House Jazz. We out. We out. We out. Peace.